Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the workshop today. It's a Tuesday and a Tuesday means the shop is mine myself here because the auto shop is not open on Tuesdays so that we can be open on Saturday. So it works real nice because a lot of people are working and stuff and, and can't come in throughout the week. So if they need to get an oil change or brakes on or something like that, Saturday is the day for it. That means Tuesday, the shop is quiet. It's just me here. And I've got, this is gonna be a throwback for some of you long tongue followers. I have a couple axes here to do. Now, a guy sent me these couple heads. They were ugly and rusty. And he said, uh, by the way, no edges on them. And he said, these belong to my grandfather. He said, they're probably just some cheap hardware store heads or something, but he said, I'd like to get them cleaned up and restored, handles put on them and done, just for the sentimental value. But when I got them cleaned up, you can see this one here, look at that, Walters. Beautiful, this is a beautiful shaped ax head. I already ground this one in to a nice flat plane edge and it is just ripping sharp there now. And then the other one, focus, look at that. Look how good that stamp is. A Welland Vale made here in Canada back in the day. Love the Welland Vale ax line, but let's have a look at these edges. I'd say that's pretty crisp for an ax edge. Look at that, guys. But we need to get these taped up now right away before we do anything else. And then, I'll show you the handles I've got here. A couple beautiful handles. Handles are getting harder and harder to find. But this is about the perfect handle, in my opinion. I've hung tons of these uh, in, the, in the early years of my channel. And this 21 inch is just about perfect. Hickory, it's just the right size. It's long enough to do pretty much anything from felling to, to heavy splitting, yet small enough you can just manage it one hand and no problem. It's just, it makes a beautiful bush ax, a pack ax, just the right size. But finding them in good condition with the right grain, almost impossible. Now what I mean when I talk about grain structure or good grain structure, when you hit an ax here, and you're holding here, all of that pressure is suspended through the middle, kind of like a bridge. All of that down pressure comes out through the bottom here. Now, if you have an ax where the grain lines are this way, okay, and what's going to happen is when you have these lowermost grains, they're only going to come here like this and you're gonna have what's called run out here on the bottom side. And that is a very, very weak joint because these layers want to delaminate. So when you strike and that pressure goes out through the bottom, these just split out and that's why you have this arrow you guys have seen ax handles I'm sure smashed off like that before. What you want is an ax handle with grain that looks like that. Look at that, nice tight grain. So as many layers as you can get in a short area. And if they're running this way on the handle, that means, ignore the permanent marker mark there now, there is no grain run out in this handle. So that means every strip of wood runs from this end to your hand without being cut off. So you have this huge core of wood here that has no breaks, no ability to delaminate. This is a near perfect handle. Beautiful palm swell, just right. And then, like I said, that perfect grain. You don't want this. So if you're in the hardware store looking for an ax and it has these grain run out here and you look at these grain lines and they're running this way, don't bother. Don't waste your time installing it on your nice ax head. It's not likely to hold up over time. I just want to stay tuned because this client wants leather work as well. It's going to be a couple of premium axe builds here. The first problem to address here, these handles come clear coated with that heavy clear varnish. Some people keep that on, but I believe, as I understand it, it's just a coating meant to protect the handle. This handle might have been made a few years ago, might have been made 10 years ago, 
and it's been passed from a manufacturer to a distributor to a retail and it's being picked up in retail, retail uh, stores and things. And if it was sitting with no varnish, it would have so many like oil prints from your hands and dirt and scuffs and everything from being handled. And they, they wouldn't look pretty at this point. Not a big deal for me, but because uh, I'm going to give them a rough hand sand anyways if I got them like that. But for most people, when you get them like this with that varnish on them, they look pristine. You can clean them with spray nine. They look beautiful. But this is not a nice material on your hands. It's bad for blisters. It will shell and flake off and splinter in the sun. You want to get rid of it. Now, it's been a little while since we've fitted an accent on this channel. And I want to show you guys the way to do it. And maybe take away a few. Because I remember in my early days of fitting axes. It was a pretty intimidating thing. You wanted to do it just right. How do you know if it's going to hold? This type of friction fit, wedge fit hold, is very strong. And I wasted a ton of time trying to get the fit absolutely perfect when it's not really necessary. Let me show you guys what's going on. First, you want to take your handle and have a look down. Just put it to the eye of your axe like that. See where the light is, okay, so a little light back around there. The length front to back, or top to bottom as it is there now is fine. But I can see that there's a little bit too much meat right here. Same thing on the other side. So I need to sort of hog a little material right here just to slim line this in a little bit. I'm going to go with a little bit coarser belt actually. And you can do this with a hand file. If you're nervous, take it a few strokes at a time, very slow. Let's have a look. Okay, just with that, I can slip it on there now. I'm gonna have a look and see, because I don't wanna drive this down over until I have to, because you don't wanna have to knock it back out of there and try it, hammering it all the way in and knock it back out. You don't want all that test fitting. So I can look here now, I can see right where I need a little bit more material. And it's right on this cusp right here so it needs to be just in a little bit right there and that's what we're looking at inside there i've got the iso on the camera turned way up so you can see some light few little gaps back around there that means nothing when this is all the way through and our wedges drove in there that means nothing real nice fit front to back i think let me look at here i think we're pretty much able to drive that through now okay let's move to the next step a little bit of teak oil, could be tongue oil, could be boiled linseed oil, could be regular linseed oil. Come on, there we go. Now, if this is around, and you've got this on rags or shop towels like I do, don't leave it sitting on your shop floor. Don't throw it in a garbage can. It can combust. Boiled linseed oil especially has uh, activating ingredients that helps it cure and dry really quickly. So you don't want it left there because it can actually generate enough heat that it combusts in your garbage can. Got my beautiful custom cherry mallet here I built uh, quite a few years ago. Ah. That's how you want. You want to be able to slip that on just by hand that far anyway. So you don't want to have to fight just to get it started. You're going to create so much head pressure by driving it on 
that you'll create problems. You could bust out your handle, you could, could destroy the end of your handle here, you could get it three quarters of the way on and not be able to move it any further and you've got big problems. Just not worth it. This is, you should be able to push it on like that. No problem, just by hand. Now, don't pound on the top of your head. You turn it over, it'll stay on there. And you drive it on by hitting the handle. So with those few hits, let me just show you guys. I'm on quite a distance here. I'm gonna turn it around and hit it this way, so hopefully I skew it back through the head. This way, yeah, it's working. I used to have a small, uh, a small hatchet. That was my favorite thing to drive these with. I wonder where that little hatchet is these days. That's looking great. Now we're starting to curl that wood out. We're chasing pretty rainbows. Couple more cracks. And I'm not wailing on this. Don't think that I'm pounding. This is just nice clicks. Doesn't take a massive amount of uh, effort. And you don't want to miss and split the sides out of your nice palm swell here. That would be sad. That is just lovely fed up. Look at that. Nice and snug all the way around. We've got wood curling out. Look at that. Nice fit. Lots of... Uh, Lots of the top of the handle sticking out to drive a wedge in. That'll flare all this wood out and fill up this space around here. Now in all my years past working on axes, I didn't have this big beautiful bandsaw. And I don't know if this tooth is going to uh, work for me here now. I won't change out the blade. But um, wedges, creating wedges, are the toughest thing to do if you only have hand tools. Now, it's not a big issue. You can rip them out with a handsaw, no problem. It's a little tricky if your handsaw skills aren't great, but uh, a bandsaw like this, a chop saw, you can rip them out, a table saw, a handsaw, lots of different ways you can go about it. You can cut a flat piece and then use a plane to plane it into an angle, lots of different ways. Once it's started, you want a good flat driving surface and just One nice simple sheath here. Axe two nice simple sheath here.
You want lots of needles, lots of thread options if you can. But I understand certainly that it's hard to start out like that. It wasn't that long ago that I was just shopping for one color at a time. Just enough to, well, I could buy some black now and then maybe after I get a few sales, maybe I'd get some brown in. And then I think I said, oh, a hunter orange would be really cool. I'll get a hunter orange. I think I could could sell some hunter orange and then I got some red and then it just went on like that over the years and and now it's just once in a while I replenish one the black runs out I I buy black and that kind of deal but I know that in the beginning kind of want to start light if you're just starting with one in the beginning I would go with a brown but then you don't really want to do black leather with brown stitching, it doesn't look great. You can do brown leather with black stitching, it looks great. So maybe actually start with a black, maybe a black thread, because black goes with anything. Red dyed leather or brown dyed leather. Or just going with a simple saddle stitch here through and through so you can see so you can see here they are at one side so I'll put this one in the next hole down see that pull it through and this one here I'll go back through so then they just keep switching sides now the needles are on opposite side from what they were you draw them a little snug and you work your way like that It just came out so beautiful on these sheaths, guys, that I decided to not use an, an edge coat at all. So we can see those three beautiful layers. I'm just going to use a gum tragath there. It's like a thick gel that dries and you can burnish it just beautifully. It's a glossy, uh, it's a glossy coating. Just adds a richness and it seals the edge because of course that edge is what's most susceptible to moisture uptake. Look at that nice crisp edge there. And then the sheaths themselves. I did a little, you can see, a little airbrushing and then once we get these edges burnished and done, we'll oil the sheaths and they'll take on a, a much darker, richer color. Oh, that's gonna burn so beautifully. Love it. These are just turning out beautifully, guys. These are just turning out beautifully, guys. Now we'll add the richness and color to them with some oil, give them water resistance. Working on these that belong to his grandfather. Get a picture of my grandfather right there that I love having in the shop. Oh, if my pop was, uh, was alive now, wouldn't he love to have seen this place here. I can tell you he'd be down around here every day. 
seeing what was going on, lending a hand, whatever he could, whatever he could be up to, he'd be here. I do a, a lot of these projects of old restoring old knives and things. That was Grandpa's hunting knife and things like that for clients all over the globe. And I sort of, I sort of fight the line between being a, uh, I'll say worldly, materialistic and and just really treasuring these items because I know to me they mean so much to have grandpa's hunting rifle or grandpa's knife and I know they're just things, they're just items but there's something so beautiful and special about it when a, when a guy my age, 30 odd, 40 years old uh, contacts me and says I've got my grandfather's hunting knife I want it just brought back to pristine condition so I can put it on the mantle man those projects mean so much to me or like this axe here that was grandfather's axes you know what do you guys think what is the the line where you're just being materialistic and putting so much value in, in things and in stuff or if it's not the item at all and it's just feels like a piece of feels like a piece of pop piece of grandpa okay here we go fresh leather work going on all right here they are guys beautiful pieces whether display or totally functioning work pieces these are fine axes Especially this uh, this Walters. It's got a nice long bit left to it. Beautiful, great grain orientation. Now nice leather sheaths, so great to go into the bike or the truck or on a mantle or whatever. Grandpa's axe. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you learned something. Continentalsvideo.com to check out my products, including uh, leather work for the Grands for Small Forest Axe is available there. If you need some custom leather work yourself, go ahead and email me. All the information is down in the description. But thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.